Hey guys, we've got this 09 Malibu here. Uh, pretty busy day at the shop this morning, but this is the VIN B, that's the PZEV engine, uh, the 24. And I just want to bring you along on a, on a quick diagnosis. I've already checked this out. Like I say, we're super busy today, so I wasn't going to do a video on it, but uh, this is a pretty common problem, so I think this will probably help somebody out. So this one came in for inspection. The uh, check engine light is on. So the code it came in for originally is this 2432. Uh, the description on that is a secondary air uh, system pressure sensor, circuit voltage low. Um, I'll show you how to go about diagnosing that. Or, you know, disregard these other codes. This is simply because I've had it unplugged and I've already diagnosed it. So I'll just show you real quick uh, what goes on with these uh, in case you have this issue. So the secondary air pump lives down where we can't see it, but basically, if you follow your, your secondary air tube here down, it's in this general direction by the starter motor, it kind of bolts under there. You know, you've got another air tube right here going to the, uh, it's the fresh air side. You know, the hose comes up and around and goes back to, um, I don't know what they would call it, diverter valve or, you know, it's your, it used to be check valves, but now they're, now they're all high tech on us. Uh, so what happens is, or what, is included in here is an electronic valve that can control the airflow going into the head uh, for the air injection reactor. And then they also nowadays have a built-in pressure sensor. And that's what's going wrong with these here. Uh, so you've got five wires on this. I've got a little uh, printed out a diagram so you can see that. So we can do a quick circuit check. So you can see we've got our, we've got a solenoid in there and then we've got a five volt uh, pressure feedback sensor. Um, and what will happen is the, the car will do a certain amount of tests on itself. It'll turn the air injection pump on. It will open the diverter valve. It'll monitor the pressure. Then it will deadhead the pressure. And it will check, you know, bo in both cases, uh, you know, when this system's open, it should increase, you know, uh, a couple, uh, they do in kilopascals, so many kilopascals above barrow. And then when it shuts this valve off, it should increase, you know, dramatically, you know, deadhead pressure. Uh, and if it doesn't see a change there, um, it then leaves it in the off position, in which case the pressure sensor should read uh, the same as barometric pressure. And then if it doesn't, then it will set this code, uh, this 2432 uh, for the voltage staying low. So that's kind of the quick rundown on that. These um, diverter valves, pressure sensors, whatever you want to call them, um, are very failure prone and they're usually full of water is, is my experience. You know, the moisture condensation builds up there. They're kind of spendy, uh, but super common issue. So the first thing you can do, uh, we can go right in with our uh, scan tool. Uh, you almost need a scan tool for this. I mean, you can do it without it, but um, we'll go to uh, data and then we'll pick air injection. Uh, so, and then immediately uh, we can see our problem right off. So our air pressure sensor, for whatever reason, open circuit on these defaults to 5.9 uh, PSI. Uh, that's the way it is. That is correct. If you see that, that is right. Um, what we should be seeing is 14.2. So it should read barometric pressure, uh, but in this case it doesn't. Um, and you can see our voltage is low. So uh, we can simply you can take and simply unplug it. Of course, we shouldn't see much change over here. So yeah, we stayed at you know 5.8, so pr pretty much the same uh, PSI. Our voltage went to zero, and then we can just do some quick circuit checks with it. So we'll take our, take our scan tool here. Um, I'm gonna set this where we can all see it. Uh, so I've got just a digital test slate here. And I've got a little front probe. These these things have some super tiny wires, so you can't just you know go jab your test slate in there, all gorilla like. All right, so it says so our pressure sensor, our feedback wire, our uh, signal return wire is going to be this brown with white, and then we've got a white and a dark blue. So one of the white or the dark blue with white stripe, one of those two is going to be a ground, one is going to be a five volt reference. So right now I've got our test slate hooked to ground. Or I'm sorry, hooked to a power. So we'll try the white wire first. Let's we'll see if that's our ground. Uh, and it's not. So this comes up minus 6.5. So that is likely our five volt reference because that's gonna be the difference. Because if we add five to that, what do you get? 11 something. 
So yep, there it is. So that, the white wire in this case, is our 5 volt reference, or 4.8 volts. So we'll go back to positive, so that by default should leave our blue wire, should be our ground. Is so 11.7 or 11.5. Our battery is at 11.6. So our battery is low on charge, 11.5. So that's why we've got the difference. So yeah, 11, 11.5. 11 so that's our ground. So now what we can do is plug into it. We know we've got power. We know we've got five volts. We know we've got a ground. Uh, we can plug back into the signal return wire. And even with our digital test light, these will pass enough current, or at least this one will, to uh, make the difference here uh, on our air pressure sensor voltage so we should see our pressure you know spike as voltage increases and we should see a 5 volt output on our pressure sensor voltage uh, right now the test light is hooked to power we'll probe it yep that works and this is completely safe so we can see uh, that it took our sensor voltage went to 5 volts 21 psi uh, I don't remember what uh, the default max you know psi reading is but fact of the matter is we see five volts we see zero volts so that confirms our circuit is good we no longer have to be concerned about that and then the other thing we can do while we're right here uh, if if you have the option we'll go under tests and then we'll pick air system uh, air pump relay, I think that'll turn on the whole system. There's two relays, there's one on the pump and then there's one that actually controls this valve. Um, so what we'll do, you know, we go down here, pressure reading, we turn it on and we can see we get no pressure change. But we can clearly hear the pump running so I don't know what's under air system. Maybe maybe it'll open that valve. That sounds like it was just deadheaded right there. Yep, you can hear the difference in the sound. So it commanded our uh, solenoid on back here. So if you listen closely when I open this, you should hear the pump change. Hear that? So that means our valve is working. So that tests that whole circuit also. So that's it. The conclusion is the pressure sensor is bad. So that's it folks. These are super easy to diagnose. Uh, you know, assuming you have a scan tool. You can do it without a scan tool. You can turn the uh, pump on manually. You got to get under there. It's a little trickier. Um, the solenoid or the relay for that solenoid is right here in the underhood fuse box. Um, so you can open and close that or you can open and close that with 12 volts. Um, you know, or you know, just kind of do like we did if you have a scan tool. That's definitely the easiest way to do it. So it's kind of silly. Pressure sensor, now we've got to buy that whole valve um, in order to fix this car. But that's the way it is, the way GM designed it. We're just here to fix them. So thanks for coming along on this quick diagnosis. Uh, Facebook, Google Plus, check us out there. If you haven't done that, subscribe to our channel. Uh, if you haven't done that yet, we appreciate all the subscriptions we get, and you can stay up to date with all the latest publications we throw out uh, each and every week. And just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.